Special video today. Thank you guys for tuning in. Giving my final opinions on the Sig Spear. Kind of nervous to make this video because, man, I, I tried being as unbiased as I could, uh, but I really struggled because I was like, I was looking at it as, is this a good rifle all around or is this a good rifle to replace the M4? So it was kind of hard <laughs> to stay on track. I uh, definitely have to give my opinions on both. Um, and it was it was kind of a kind of a difficult difficult rifle to review because this one is the army's new rifle that will be replacing the M4 and I I've been looking at it as that and kind of only that and you kind of sometimes have to back away and say is it a good rifle or is it a good rifle but bad for the military uh, is it bad for the military but a good rifle I just don't know anymore so I was kind of nervous to make this video but I'm just gonna go about the pluses and minuses that I feel of this rifle and then we can talk about if it is a good rifle for the military but um, if you guys like comment and subscribe I'm going to be giving away a midnight run hat to one lucky um, commenter commenter I'll throw some shirts in and some stickers and stuff, but you got to comment, like, and subscribe. really helps me out, and I will send you guys a hat or whatever. I'll be sending a lot of stuff out to the commenters, commenters, or whatever. But let's just get right on into it. We'll go nut to butt, and uh, I'll give you my honest opinion on what I liked about this rifle. First things first, it definitely needs a suppressor. Uh, without a suppressor, it kind of was, it was kind of uncomfortable to shoot. It was kind of a, it's definitely a sludge hammer and not the smoothest shooting rifle. But I noticed that as soon as I put a suppressor on it, it smoothed everything out. So it just felt like it was built for a suppressor. Um, get a flow through one. I'm using a OSS on it right now, but I was using the Banish 30 Gold on it for a little bit. And it was kind of struggling. It just, it just, something fell off. As soon as I put the OSS on it, which is a flow through, it, it evened everything out and it was just a lot smoother, better shooting rifle with that suppressor on it. Which I do believe that this rifle was built for a flow through can because that's the ones that SIG uses and stuff like that. So definitely get a flow through suppressor for it if you're going to run a can on it. Uh, going to the gas block. I'm white. I'm slow. My parents thought I had Down syndrome till I was about 28. I'm 30 now, so I am definitely slow. And the gas block makes it super easy for finger lickers like myself, where all it says is suppressed and unsuppressed. You can't mess it up. Unlike the Spear LT that was saying, like, aggressive ammo, not aggressive ammo, yada, yada, yada made it a little confusing with like what the setting was, but the spear makes it stupid easy, makes it army proof, suppressed or unsuppressed, that's all your settings are. So that's definitely a plus. Going into the rail, I like how it is M-lock. It feels very comfortable to shoot. Um, it's not like, you know, once you're done shooting it, you don't look like Ben Stiller from Tropic Thunder. Uh, it's a very comfortable rifle to shoot and Super smooth, totally not a cheese grater. I enjoy how they put the QD mounts already on the rail. That's a that's a huge that's a huge deal, man. I love when they do that. You don't have to put an attachment on it. You don't have to screw it on. And then you know you don't tighten it down, and the thing comes loose. And then all of a sudden you're you're running around, and then your your sling falls off. Suppressor goes, you know, barrel first in or whatever, and you just look stupid. So. I really like how the QD mounts are already installed into the rifle. That is a huge plus. The barrels are interchangeable. It's interchangeable calibers, which is awesome. I know SIG's going to be releasing different um, calibers for the Spear. This is the 308, 308 right now. I think they're going to be releasing a 6.5 Creedmoor and then the 68 by 51 or the 6.8 Fury, which will be the, is the military's version of this. So that's awesome. You know, you can essentially have one rifle, three different calibers. Going into the lower, I like the magazine well, how it's flared out a little bit. That's, that's a plus. It's a lot easier to, you know, slam mags in there. You're not kind of fishing around to, uh, you know, put that mag in. 
Uh, that's awesome. And I also like how they have just normal magazines. It's not like HK that uses those, um, you know, their own magazines and there's like $100 a mag. Uh, I've been running PMAGs on them, haven't had any issues. I take that back. I had a little bit of an issue in the beginning, but I think it was just the magazines were trying to break in. They were brand new magazines. And then once I put a couple hundred rounds through them, uh, it was, they were working great. So haven't had any issues with PMAGs. I know people were using these, uh, the, um, man, I already forgot the, the, the brand but it'll come to me. The clear ones, they're the, the polymer clear ones and they have kind of like a metal feed, the, the feed uh, ramp in there and it's like metal on top. I forget what, what the brand is, um, it'll come to me. But I know people have been running those and they were loving them. Uh, I, I wanna try some out, I just haven't had time to go get any. So I've just been running the PMAGs, had, had it, haven't had any issues with them. All ambi controls, oh. That is a chef's kiss. That is a chef's kiss. You have the ambidextrous mag releases. You have the ambidextrous uh, bolt catch and bolt releases. You got the ambidextrous selector switch and you have the ambidextrous charging handles. So everything's ambi, which is awesome. Uh, why I like that is because you never ever have to take your hand off the rifle. If you have a jam, if you have a malfunction or anything like that, you can always keep a hand on the rifle and you can clear that jam or you can clear your problem with the opposite hand. You don't have to put it down. You don't have to like, you know, figure it out, yada, yada, yada. You can always have a hand on the rifle. So especially with that ambidextrous charging handle on the side, the side charging handle, it's sick. I love it. I wish more people uh, did that. Huge thumbs up on that. Going into the stock, I love how it can fold. That is a huge plus, huge plus. You know, trying to put it in a bag, trying to, you know, carry it around. You can totally fold that stock and everything works great. So that is a huge plus. I love how they did that. And I wish more people did, did more companies did the folding stock right from the factory and you didn't have to, you know, use the LaRue mount or whatever like that. Really like how it's folding. Probably one of my favorite pieces to the spear is the stock and how it folds. Going into the negatives of the Sig Spear. Price point, ugh, good Lord. You better have some deep pockets. You better have some deep pockets or uh, you better have a very, very high uh, credit card limit because this thing is not cheap. I think it's about north of 3,500 bucks and that's not even with glass, that's not even with a can bipod, sling, scope rings, and all your other attachments. Um, so you're, you're, you're definitely gonna be dishing out some money for something like this, which kind of sucks. It is, pretty, it is pretty expensive. But I mean, if you're looking at all these other high-end semi-automatic 308s, um, you know, they're, they're right around the same price point. Uh, but there are a lot of other options out there for cheaper price points, but you're not getting, you know, the ambidextrous stuff and all that other jazz. But price point, it is pretty expensive. And uh, yeah, you better, you better be prepared. You better be prepared to be eating ramen noodles for a while. Uh, but please, if you don't have the cash, <laughs> don't, don't go buy this rifle because there's a lot of other options out there for, for, for a cheaper price that will do the same exact thing. You just don't get a couple of the attachments on it. But, so it is a very, very expensive rifle. Um, going into the, we'll just go butt to nut up here. Going into the stock, it is a Magpul stock. It's kind of uncomfortable. It's very thin. It's like it needs to be a little wider. I wish it was just a little tiny wider. It would feel a lot better on your face. Your face would get a, a lot better uh, grip on there and you can plant down better for a good, a lot better, more stable um, sight picture when you are shooting. Uh, with my big pan head, it's kind of thin. Don't really like it. So that might be something that I will upgrade in the future. But um, it, it's all right for, you know, it's all right for, for, for now, but. That's something that I will upgrade. The big thing, <laughs> weight. She's a fat girl, man. She is a fat girl, extremely heavy. But I hate saying that, ooh, it's heavy, blah, blah, blah. Just do more trend, bro.
Just do more Tren. Go do more steroids. That's all you gotta do. Then this thing will be nothing to you. But it's, all, on all serious, it's, it's not that bad. Uh, if you, you know, you're used to running an M4 or you know, an AR that's kind of lighter, and then you go to this, yes, it's going to be pretty heavy. But I've got used, I've got used to it. I have about 3,000 rounds for this thing, and um, I've kind of gotten used to it. It's not, not, it's not that bad, to be honest. Um, I've shot heavier rifles, but I've also shot a lot lighter rifles as well. Accuracy. That is another negative to this thing. But I also feel bad bringing that up because it's not a precision rifle. It's a battle rifle. So, but good lord. I mean, it's, it's probably about half MOA. About half MOA. Uh, I've shot a lot of different rounds through it. The 150 grains, it hated. Uh, the 147 grade, it hated. 168 grain, it didn't mind. And then the, it liked the 175 the best. So... If you're going to shoot this rifle, if you're going to get one, uh, probably try out the 175 grains. 168 were meh, uh, but 175 grain, I, I noticed that it performed the, the best. So that's my positives and that's my negatives to the Spear. I think that this is a great rifle. I've had zero malfunctions with this thing. It just runs and runs and runs and runs. Uh, I really, really enjoy it. But just like anything, it has its negatives, and we talked about them. Now, going into the million dollar question. Drum roll. Is this a good replacement for the M4? In my opinion on it is, I don't know. I don't know. And I don't think a lot of people do know, to be honest. Because you don't know where, where we are going to be. You don't know where our military is going to be, and you, you don't know the next battlefield. I've talked to a lot of people that, you know, when they were in Afghanistan, they said we would have loved something like this. Um, you know, the M4 was really struggling at higher elevations, at higher distances, and things like that. Then you have people that were in Iraq and, you know, clearing rooms and whatnot in kind of like a city environment, and they said, screw that, I would not want to run around with that. Um, we just don't know what's going to happen. It's kind of hard to say that this rifle sucks for the military when we, we just don't know where we, what, what, what's next. You just don't know. Uh, people are like, history says that the, that the, the battle rifle doesn't, doesn't work and, and I'm gay. Yes, you are gay. Because as you, I mean, look at the M1 Garand, dude. It was a semi-automatic 30-odd-6. <laughs> semi-automatic 30-odd-6. And that sent more, it, more people into eternity than cancer did. Um, it won a world war for us. So, again, we just do not know. Uh, it's too soon. The program's too soon. I just don't think that there was enough testing in the field, in, you know, a tra the traditional army environment. To, to give an opinion on it yet. Um, and also, you know, you gotta look at where, you know, the, the enemies that we are looking, that are most likely we will go fight. We're not in a coin environment anymore. We're, we're fighting, you know, dudes in sandals and man dresses. Uh, we're, the, the, the next fight will probably be a um, near peer threat where, you know, we're, ta we're fighting guys with body armor on. Um, this is something that you got to think about. You know, you look at Russia and you look at China, uh, an actual established military with body armor, their stuff can probably stop a 556. Uh, it's not going to stop this. So that's something that you got to think about that, you know, the enemy uh, probably thinks about too. They're like, geez, man, we're going to send our guys out there. Our body armor was good for 556, but now, you know, this 6.8 by 51 is punching right through it and we're getting massacred. So then they got to put more money into getting body armor, more money into, you know, studying and advancing, you know, their equipment. So that's something that this, that's something that this, this rifle could do as well. There's just so much to think about, and I just don't think that anybody really knows. Uh, please leave leave a comment. Tell me what you think. I mean, am I crazy? I I, I just don't really know. People are like, you you know, you're you. It's proven that the 
the more range, the more rounds you send down range is usually the victor. Yes, that is true. That is that is a that is a very that is a very true statement. But you also got to look at the technology that we have in modern day. Look at the scope that the military is buying, the standard issue scope that we're going to get, that Vortex one, where everybody is a uh, designated marksman. Literally, all you do is point and shoot. You don't have to do anything, and you don't miss. It's insane. So something like that vortex on this will totally totally change the battlefield now you have you have just your normal line soldier that is shooting out to six seven hundred yards and not missing and that's everybody so it's totally something there's a lot to think about and i just don't think we are you know there yet to make an honest opinion if this would be a good replacement for the m4 because i just don't know um, you know, there are some things that we, that, that, that's going to take a little bit of time to get used to, like, you know, running the 30 magazine, 30 round mags. Now we're going to be running 20 round mags, um, you know, and that turns into bigger ammo. And then that turns into ounces, turns into pounds, pounds turn into hurt knees, hurt back. And it, it, it could be a definitely something that will, will be, will take a while to get used to. But there's a lot of different ways to look at look at it. Um, a lot of different ways to skin a cat, and I just I just don't think that we are there yet. Um, but my honest opinion on it: Do I feel that this rifle will just be the whole standard issue issued rifle for for the army? No, I think it will more or less be like a DMR style style role. To be honest, I don't think it will replace the M4 flat out. But I could be wrong. That's just my theory on it. So. That's, that's what I have to say. You know, there's a lot of keyboard warriors out there, um, you know, that, that, you know, just like anything new, you look at throughout history, it, when, when a rifle was getting replaced, everybody talked crap about it. I mean, look at the M4. A lot of people were scared of the M4. They said, this thing sucks. Why would you go from a larger caliber to a smaller caliber? Now you look at it. Now they're phasing out the M16, M4 style rifle, and everybody's like, whoa, whoa, <laughs> what are we doing? It's a, it's a tried and true rifle. But technology advances, things advance, things adapt, and you gotta adapt, overcome feng shui, yoga, whatever it may be. You gotta adapt and overcome, and that's with technology. Um, so that's just kind of my, my, two, my two, two cents on it, to be honest. We just don't know. I don't know, but uh, time will tell. And I'm really excited to see what happens. It's probably not going to be for a while, but we will see. We will see. So that's it. Thank you guys for watching. That is my uh, final review on the Sig Spear. Really like this rifle. Very fun to shoot. And I had a great time testing it out. You'll probably see it again. I will definitely bring it back out. But uh, on to the next next bigger better review i suppose so thank you guys again for watching i really appreciate it i hope uh this cleared some stuff up about the sig spear and i'll see you back out there later